50 people dead, 8.2 million without power, and over 20 billion US dollars. That's about 160 billion Kenya shillings in damages. That's the shocking aftermath of Hurricane Sandy along the East Coast here in the US. Now, of course, as residents come to terms with this unfathomable reality, election officials are left with the daunting task of seeing to it that the polls run as scheduled next Tuesday. Now, of course, early voting has already been cancelled in some states. And experts say in a worst case scenario, a never before used federal law gives states authority to reschedule or even cancel the election altogether. But of course, they're working very hard to see to it that voters take to the polls on the 6th of November, 2012. Now, what far-reaching implications will the damage from the storm have on the nation's economy? Well, of course, there's going to be the task of rebuilding and reconstructing everything that's happened. Some experts see a silver lining in the storm, so to speak. Well, the stories that are coming out today are that it also will have some positive economic implications, obviously not human. There will have to be a lot of spending done for instance, to restore some things. And that spending itself will create jobs. Um, on the other hand, no one is going to go shopping, um, not spending any money. But there also will be this effect of kind of a rebuilding effect. As we look at the ripple effects that the hurricane has on the economy, we examine how in the midst of a crisis of such magnitude, economic recovery and leadership remain pivotal ahead of an election. Willis Roboro tells us more. It's a hurricane that has left in its wake no semblance of what life was before it. Coastlines have been washed, families left homeless, and lives lost. All this with an election in the offing. In a few days, residents from these states, so adversely affected, will cast their vote. A dicey situation, yet a vital fulfillment of a civic duty. The people that we are electing are determining the course of our lives. They're determining what kind of health care we're going to get. They're determining how much we're going to be taxed, how much money we're going to make. Um, I mean, it's all sorts of things. So yes, the issues are critically important. Now, Kenya is equally preparing for an election next year that is going to be tightly contested if the events shaping the political landscape thus far are anything to go by. It's an election with several contenders and one that has caught the attention of the international community. The new con uh, constitution, you know, uh, with this extra time devoted to having what would be seen as a fair and free election, um, uh, not only will it make people in Kenya feel much better about their democracy and their future, but again, that will be, will be recorded in the world's media. Here is a place that has fair and free elections that is moving toward uh, sustainable democracy. The importance of economic stability occasioned by, among other things, a peaceful transition of power whenever the occasion arises in the United States, not just good for the states, but also for Kenyans living here in the diaspora. Success of a Kenyan diaspora in the U.S. means if our economy does well, um, we will uh, have more investment coming from, from the U.S. to Kenya, but also more private remittances, people here who have family back in Kenya. Because again, you have very many successful professionals in the U.S. who are Kenyan. So they're making good incomes and they send money back. We caught up with a few Kenyans living in the diaspora to have them weigh in on the upcoming elections in Kenya and their views were centered on a very specific theme. We are at a point where Kenya can either make a decision that will take Kenya to the next level or they can make a decision that is going to break Kenya. Because we have a lot at stake. We have the new constitution at stake which needs to be implemented. And, and the thing that is of big concern is the tribe of fail that most political leaders are hiding behind tribal, tribalism. Somebody shouldn't have to go through anybody to get votes in Eastern. Somebody shouldn't have to go through somebody or to form some kind of alliance to get votes in Central or Western or Nyanza. Kenyans are Kenyans and whoever presents themselves as candidate, they ought to go to the people directly without having to go to their, you know, to their leader who has collected all these votes and put them in this basket 
and label it their, their party and say, if you want my votes, you have to come through me. I, I really think those alliances need to be dismantled. Now that is just a sample of what the Kenyans living here in the diaspora had to say. There are about 3.5 million of them living here in the United States. Now they're eager to participate in the vote despite the challenges they face. And their voice, their vote, one that will ultimately influence the outcome of the next general election. Willis Rubiru, Citizen TV in Atlanta, Georgia. The next few days remain absolutely crucial in as far as the final preparations for the U.S. election goes. But with growing concerns over delays and cancellations already looming, this is truly turning out to be a most complex electoral period in U.S. history. Now, we'll be traveling to other states to monitor the situation on the ground, take a look at the issues coming out from there as well. We'll keep you posted on those details and others. Janet Bugwa, Citizen TV, Atlanta, Georgia.